This video explains how to use the Trace32 FDX Trace. In this video, we use a Trace32 PowerView for ARM release of September 2020 and a power debug USB 3 connected to an STM32 board with a Cortex M4 processor. The Cortex M4 allows memory access on runtime, which will be used to transfer the FDX Trace data to Trace32. The Trace32 FDX Trace is a software trace method that is mainly used when no hardware-based trace is available. This trace method requires a modification of the target application in order to send, on the fly, specific trace information to the Trace32 PowerView application on the host via memory channel or ARM debug communication channel DCC. Trace32 is capable to interpret the FDX data stream and handle it as an ordinary trace information. On the contrary to the logger trace, FDX trace allows to stream the trace information while recording to Trace32. Please also refer to our video Trace32 logger trace. The source and header files for FDX trace can be found in the Trace32 demo directory under Demo. Then the processor family, for example ARM, then FDX. Whenever a part of the application uses FDX, the header file t32fdx.h must be included. Moreover, when compiling and linking the application, the file t32fdx.c must be handled as normal source component. To initialize the FDX trace, the target application should first call t32 FDX trace init. t32 FDX trace data can then be used in order to copy the trace information of a single trace record into the output buffer. The first parameter of this function includes the information of the data size in bytes and the bus access type that is read, write, or fetch. Please refer to the t32fdx.c for more information. Here we're tracing the 32-bit variable mcount and the 16-bit variable plot2 within the main function, as well as the entry of some selected functions. In order to set up trace32 FDX trace, we need first to set the size of the trace buffer that should be reserved for the FDX trace data on the host. Next thing to do is to select the FDX method type. Here, buffer E, that is dual port memory access. Finally, we need to set the FDX trace channel. These steps can also be done in a practice script. The FDX trace is now set up so we can start the program and the trace recording. The trace windows show the activity on the channel for the last seconds. If the FDX target code tries to add data to the buffer while it is full, it stalls until further data is transferred to the host. Stalls are displayed in this field. The occurrence of stalls depends on the amount of transferred trace data and the speed of the used trace channel. Let's now display the recorded trace data. The FTX.list windows shows the traced address, cycle information, recorded data, and symbolic information. Trace32 additionally provides various further display options of the trace data. We can use the ftx.draw.var command, for example, in order to display the recorded data values graphically. The function activity chart of the functions that we instrumented with a t32 ftx trace data function call can be displayed by pressing the chart button from the ftx.list window.
or using the command fdx.chart.symbol. Please refer to the Trace32 documentation for more information about FDX. Thank you for your attention.